Shabbat Shalom, happy Saturday, whichever is your practice. Welcome to Open Temple's virtual yoga studio. We're gonna get started in a couple of minutes. My recommendations for today's practice, um, one, I think it will serve you well if you have access to at least one block or thick hardcover book. Um, if you have sensitive wrists, there will be a few times when we will come into plank position um, and we'll also be coming into downward facing dog. You can have relief of your wrists if you um, put blocks or books underneath. So that's a reason to have two, otherwise one is fine. And then for the end of the practice, we're gonna have a bit of a choose your own adventure. If you have access to two blankets or towels that you could fold over um, into the same size, that's what's key. Prepare them now so you'll be ready to go. Welcome to the Open Temple Virtual Yoga Studio. My name is Zach Lasker. Shabbat Shalom, good morning, good afternoon, depending on your time zone. Take a deep breath in just to center yourself. And exhale, let it out your mouth. And inhale through your nose. and exhale out your mouth. One more time, just a deep cleansing, centering breath. Inhale. And exhale. So this yoga studio is a bit of a hybrid experience. We are going to flow through a sequence of yoga poses. And interwoven in this particular class is a fair amount of wisdom drawn from the tradition of yoga and the traditions of Judaism. And specifically, we've been dedicating time um, over the course of several weeks to unlocking the wisdom in a tradition of Judaism called Musar. Musar is almost like a path of ethical behavior. It's a roadway to human decency, or as we like to say in Judaism, to menschlichkeit behavior. And so far on this journey, we've looked at the attributes of humility, we've looked at patience, we've looked at gratitude, and today our practice is dedicated to the attribute of compassion. The Hebrew word for compassion is rachamim, and interestingly, the root word is the same as the word for womb, rechem, the womb that a mother has for the child that she carries. I think that explanation really speaks volumes about the true meaning of compassion, the ability to be in proximity, in such close proximity with another being that you can feel and sense their emotions. You can feel their joy, and you can feel their suffering. And the difference, in my opinion, between empathy, which is just being aware and sensitive to another person's suffering versus compassion is action, really acting on what you perceive. And that is what I wanna invite you to do as we flow through our practice today and you have an opportunity on your yoga mat to practice self-compassion. Throughout the class, you're gonna be taking in data. You're gonna be making observations around where your body is, where your mind is, where your soul is. And can you make choices to respond accordingly in a way that is less about judgment and criticism and more about acceptance and curiosity and forgiveness? So that is my challenge to you. Um, and it's so apropos to share my weekly reminder that you need to be the master of your own practice. I want to encourage you to lean into some heat and discomfort. That's part of practicing, but be very mindful of the threshold between that heat and discomfort and pain. Never do we cross over into the arena of pain. That's a moment where you need to back off. With all of that said, Please lie down on your back, extend your legs forward, arms alongside your torso with your palms facing up. A 
Allow your ankles to roll open. And let's start in a Shavasana, in a resting pose. Inhale through your nose and exhale out your mouth. Inhale through your nose and exhale out your mouth. Place one hand on your belly and one hand on your chest. And continue that slow and steady cycle of breath. And this opportunity to feel with your palms and your hands how your body is settling in is one of our first steps on this journey towards compassion. In order to understand how you're doing, you have to be in proximity to yourself. I know that sounds so weird to say, you are yourself, but you need to wrap all of your senses around how it is that you're doing as we go through this practice. So feel the breath through the rise and fall of your chest. And together, take another inhale through your nose and exhale out your mouth. Inhale through your nose and exhale out your mouth. Draw your knees into your chest. In this practice focused on rachamim, on compassion, it's only fitting with this word that is so close to the word for womb that we come into a happy baby. So lift your shins up into the air, take your arms, reach them inside of your legs and grab onto your outer foot. And then just start to rock slowly from right to left and left to right. Just releasing your spine, massaging your lower back. And then draw your knees back into your chest. Place the soles of your feet down onto the mat. And through this practice, we are gonna work a lot on our core. So start by taking your block or book if you have one. And if you don't, it's totally fine. This is just gonna enhance your practice. Place it between your thighs and grip onto that block or book with your thighs, with your inner thighs. And then inhale, lift your arms up towards the ceiling, palms face in towards each other. And as you exhale, lower your arms down and back of you. And we're gonna flow through a sequence together. So inhale, reach your arms up, lift your upper back up into the air, bring your arms alongside your thighs and exhale. Inhale, straighten your legs. So they're, they're at a diagonal up towards the corner of the room. Exhale, bend your knees, plant your feet on the ground. Inhale, lift up a little bit higher, feel your core engage and exhale, lower down onto your back, arms up into the air, arms descend in back of you towards the back of the room. So that's the sequence that we're gonna do a few times. Inhale, arms come up towards the ceiling, lift your upper back off the mat, arms alongside you, exhale. Inhale, straighten your legs, lift them out at a diagonal. Exhale, bend your knees, lower your feet to the ground. Inhale, lift up higher, engage your core. 
and exhale, lower down onto your back, arms up to the air, arms descend in back of you. I'm gonna do that five more times. Inhale, arms up, lift up through your upper back, arms alongside your torso, exhale. Inhale, legs come out at a diagonal. Exhale, bend your knees, feet down. Inhale, lift up a little bit higher and exhale, lower down, arms in back of you. Do that four more times at your pace, bearing in mind the cycle of breath. And wrapping up just one more time. And then return your arms alongside your torso. Take the block out from in between your thighs. And now place the blocker book underneath your sitting bones. So your hips are elevated slightly. And then inhale, lift your legs up into the air, feet go towards the ceiling. Imagine that you could stamp your feet on the ceiling. And this is gonna be more vigorous if you don't have the blocker book, but you can still engage in the practice. And then inhale, lower your right leg a third of the way towards the ground and pause. Inhale another third of the way and pause. And then inhale, lower your right leg so that your right heel is floating just above the ground. And exhale, right leg up into the air. Second side, inhale, left leg down about a third of the way and pause. Inhale, another third of the way and pause. Inhale, left leg comes down so that your left heel is hovering just above the ground and then exhale, left leg up into the air. This time, both legs together. Inhale, both legs down about a third of the way and pause. Inhale, another third of the way, pause. Inhale, legs come down so that the heels hover just above the ground, and pause. And then with your next exhale, legs come back up into the air. Do it again with the block underneath the hips. Inhale, right leg a third of the way and pause. Inhale, another third of the way. Inhale, lower it down so that it's hovering just above the ground and exhale, right leg up into the air. Left side, inhale, left leg a third of the way down and pause. Inhale, another third of the way and pause. Inhale, just hovering, and exhale, left leg up to meet your right leg. Both legs together. Inhale, a third of the way, and pause. Inhale, another third of the way, and pause. Inhale, final third, almost a third, so that your heels are hovering. And exhale, legs back up into the air. Bend your knees, lower your feet onto the ground. Pause for a moment. So in this class, focused on rachamim, on compassion, I'm gonna invite you, if you want, to dial up the intensity by removing the block. But this is where I wanna come back to, you are the master of your practice as you make these observations around where you are in your practice today, choose a path of compassion. If you can go deeper, go deeper. If not, recognize and accept your limitations. So make a choice. If you wanna do it without the block, take the block out, lift your legs up, 
And you'll notice for me, the first way I'm gonna be forgiving is my legs don't go straight up into the air. Oh well. And inhale about a third of the way with your right leg. Inhale another third. Inhale a final third. Right heel is hovering. Exhale, right leg up to meet your left leg. You might need to have a slight bend in your knees like me. Inhale, left leg a third of the way. Inhale, another third. Inhale, final third, left heel hovers. And exhale, left leg up. Both legs together. Inhale, a third of the way. Inhale, another third of the way. Inhale, final, almost third. Your heels hover. Exhale, legs up towards the ceiling. Yogi's choice, you decide how to do it. Do one more cycle, right leg, left leg, and then both legs together. Matching action with breath. And then bend your knees when you're done with that cycle. Lower your feet onto the ground and pause. Take a couple cycles of breath. Draw your knees into your chest, and then start to rock and roll forward and back, forward and back, building up some momentum until you come up into a seated position. Sitting in Sukhasana, start with your right shin in front of your left shin. Hands on top of your knees, palms facing up. Inhale, lengthen through all four sides of your torso and exhale, and then put your hands onto the ground, come onto your fingertips, start to walk your fingertips forward, folding forward, and we're working our core today, so now let's add on a twist to wake up our obliques. Start to walk your hands over to the right, lift your torso up, and drape your torso over your right thigh. Lower down towards the right side of the room. Press down equally through your sitting bones. We'll be down here a moment. And rotate your left ribs over to the right. That's where the twist should come. And as we think about Rachamim, about compassion. I like to think of it as being on a spectrum with compassion on one end and harsh judgment on the other end. And there's a midrash, there's a story from Jewish tradition about the necessary interplay between judgment and compassion. The story is about a king who had some fragile cups and he said to himself, if I pour hot water into them, they will expand and break. If I pour cold water into them, they will contract and shatter. So what did he do? He mixed hot water with cold water and poured the mixture into the cups and they did not break. Walk your hands back towards the center. Lift your torso up slightly and then start to walk your hands over to the left side of the room. Lift your torso up, drape your torso over your left thigh, and this time rotate your right ribs over to the left. And so in reflecting on that story about the balance that that king was trying to achieve, the Midrash tells us that when God created the world, God reflected and said, if I create the world only with the attribute of compassion, no one will be concerned for the consequences of their actions and people will feel impunity to act badly.
But if I create the world with strict judgment alone, how would the world endure? It would shatter from the harshness of justice. So I will create it with both justice and compassion and it will endure. Bring your hands back towards the center. Walk your hands back in towards your shins, hands on top of your knees, palms facing up and let your eyes close. So we have this opportunity to practice the wisdom of this midrash on our yoga mat today. As we go through these poses, there might be an inclination to render judgment on how you're doing. And human nature to focus on the shortcomings and to be your harshest critic. And I think our challenge today in the spirit of compassion is to shift that harsh criticism towards a neutral observation. And then to let your compassion kick in and to respond accordingly. Where do you need to back off? Where do you need to practice self-acceptance? Where do you need to smile instead of letting your inner critic overtake you? Press your palms together in the center of your chest. Inhale, lengthen up through your torso. And an audible exhale out your mouth. Let your tongue loose. <sighs> Open your eyes. Come onto your hands and knees into cat and cow. Space your fingers out. Index fingers point towards the top of the mat. Hands are shoulder width apart. Inhale, arch your back, lift your heart and chest up, shine your chest forward, tush up. Exhale, round your back, draw your belly into your chest, come into a cat position. Inhale into cow, arch your back. Exhale into cat, round your back. Inhale into cow. And exhale into cat. Come back into a neutral position. Inhale, stretch your right leg back. Right leg is parallel to the floor. And exhale to deepen the intensity of the stretch and to help activate your core. Inhale, reach your left arm forward. Palm faces in towards the midline. And exhale. Inhale, grow longer through your right leg. Stamp your right foot on the wall in back of you and exhale. Inhale, lengthen through the left side of your torso to reach your left arm further towards the front of the room. And exhale, turn your stomach muscles on to help find stability. And then exhale, lower your left hand and lower your right knee. Inhale, reach your left leg back towards the back of the room, parallel to the ground. And exhale. This might be your limit. You decide. Rotate your inner left thigh up towards the ceiling to help you straighten your left leg. And now with your next inhale, right arm comes out in front of you, right palm towards the midline. Inhale. Growing longer through your left leg towards the back of the room, stamping it onto the wall in back of you. Inhale, lengthen through the right side of your torso to reach your right arm further towards the front. One more cycle of breath as you turn on your stomach muscles. And then exhale, right hand down, left knee down. Gonna do it one more time with an option to deepen the intensity. Inhale, right leg back and exhale. Inhale, left arm forward and exhale. And then inhale, bend your left elbow and right knee. Have the meat in the center of your chest. Exhale, extend out. This is tricky cat cow. Inhale, round your back as your elbow and knee meet in the center of your chest. Exhale, lengthen out. Two more times, inhale and exhale 
and inhale and exhale. Left hand down, right knee down. Second side. Inhale, left leg back and exhale. Inhale, right arm forward and exhale. And then inhale, right elbow, left knee meet in the center of your chest as your back rounds. Exhale, extend out. Inhale, elbow and knee meet. Exhale, extend out. Three more times. Matching breath with action. And then right hand down, left knee down. Space your knees out. Lower your hips onto your heels. Drop your forearms to the ground and forehead to the ground. Come into child's pose. And throughout this practice, if you have a need to take breaks, come into child's pose, come back into Sukhasana, practice compassion. Start to walk your hands towards the front of the mat, forearms lift up, hands are straight, have your hands on blocks if your wrists are sensitive and then shift your torso forward, briefly passing through tabletop, tuck your toes, lift your hips up and back, and come into your first Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Angle your heels out towards the edges of the mat to encourage your inner thighs to rotate towards the back of the room. Root down through the palms of your hands, Rebound up through your arm, shooting energy through your torso, out through your hips towards the upper back of the room. And then turn your gaze between your palms. Inhale, draw your right knee into your chest. Step your right foot forward. Lower down onto your left knee. Untuck your left toes. Press your left hand into the ground. And inhale, reach up through your right arm, twisting towards the right side of the room. And so again, working on our core, we want to make sure that this twist is emanating from your ribs as opposed to your shoulders. So lower your right hand down to your bottom ribs, scoop them up towards the ceiling. That's where the twist comes and then re-extend your top arm towards the ceiling. Your shoulders are stacked. To deepen the stretch, tuck your left toes, lift your left knee up into the air and press your left heel back to straighten your left leg. Three cycles of breath, inhale and exhale and inhale and exhale, and one more inhale, and exhale, right hand down, frame your front foot. If your left toes are untucked, then tuck your left toes, lift your left knee up, and then step your right leg back. You're in a plank position. Let's take two cycles of breath, press back through your heels towards the back of the room, one more inhale, and then exhale, shift your hips up and back, Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Inhale, draw your left knee into your chest, step your left foot forward between your hands, lower onto your left, your, excuse me, your right knee, untuck your right toes, press your right palm into the ground, and then inhale, lift your left arm up and twist open to the left. Stack your shoulders, same trick. Lower your left hand to your bottom ribs, scoop them up towards the ceiling, and then re-extend your top arm up to the ceiling. And to deepen the intensity, tuck your right toes, lift your right knee up, Press your right heel back, 
as a way to straighten that right leg and three cycles of breath. Inhale and exhale and inhale and exhale. One more inhale and exhale, lower your left hand. If your right toes are untucked, now is the time to tuck your right toes and lift your right knee up. Step your left leg back. You're in that plank position and then shift your hips up and back, downward facing dog. Hands on your block, blocks if you need some relief. And then inhale, shift your torso forward into plank. And exhale, hips up and back. Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Inhale, shift your torso forward to plank. Exhale, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Again, inhale, shift forward to plank. Holding the plank for a couple cycles of breath. And you can always modify plank by bending your knees, lowering your knees onto the ground. That might be your way to practice compassion. So whichever version of the pose you're in, shift your torso forward, bend your elbows, hug your elbows into your chest and lower five, four, three, two, one onto your belly. Untuck your toes and extend your forearms forward onto the ground. Lift your upper chest into a sphinx pose. Breathe, inhale and exhale. And inhale and exhale. One more inhale and exhale. Coming into forearm plank, tuck your toes, lift your hips up so that they're parallel to your lower back. Rotate the inner part of your thighs up towards the ceiling. Take a few cycles of breath in this forearm plank. And then lower your hips down, return to Sphinx pose. We're gonna do that again. Inhale, tuck your toes, lift your hips up, forearm plank. Turn your gaze a couple of inches in front of you between the palms of your hands. And then lower your hips down, untuck your toes, stack one hand on top of the other and lower your forehead down. Take a short rest. So Rabbi Jill Zimmerman in reflecting on self-compassion says, that many of us find it far easier to be loving and kind to others than to our own selves. We have a self-critical commentary running in the background of our thoughts throughout the day. I shouldn't have said that. I messed up, will I ever learn? Having this negative kind of self-talk wears on our hearts and souls. Additionally, self-criticism impacts our bodies by stimulating inflammatory mechanisms that lead to chronic illness and accelerate aging. So when that inner critic turns its voice on, 
How can we shift to curiosity, to making these observations, and to distilling what it is that we need in that moment and taking action? That's really the challenge of our yoga practice today. Lift your head up, return your forearms to the ground, facing towards the front of the room, tuck your toes, lift your knees up, lift your hips up, forearm plank, and now rotate your right arm in about 45 degrees and roll over onto the outside of your right foot, stack your left foot on your right foot and lift your top arm up towards the ceiling, come into forearm vashistasana, forearm side plank. Inhale and exhale. Rotate your hips towards the side of the room. And then with your next inhale, start to lower your top hand down underneath your chest and then exhale, re-extend your top arm up. Inhale, top arm lowers down, twist towards the ground. Exhale, top arm up. Inhale, top arm down and twist. Exhale, top arm up. And then top hand comes down onto the floor, lower onto that forearm and come back into forearm plank. Take a Sphinx pose if you need a rest. Respond to your observations. Don't reside in the space of being your harshest critic. And then return to the forearm plank. This time angle your left arm in 45 degrees. Roll onto the outside of your left foot. Stack your right foot on top of your left foot. Reach your top arm up towards the ceiling. Rotate your hips towards the side of the room. And inhale. And exhale. And then inhale, lower your top hand down by your stomach underneath you. And exhale, top arm comes back up. Two more times. Inhale, twist down. Exhale. Re-extend up, inhale, and exhale. Lower your top forearm back down onto the ground, return to forearm plank, lower your hips down into sphinx, untuck your toes, and take a couple cycles of breath. And then press your palms into the ground by the middle part of your ribs, fingertips face towards the front of the room. Elbows hug into your chest, tuck your toes, lift your knees up, push back up into plank, shift your hips up and back, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Turn your gaze between your palms, start to walk your feet forward into Uttanasana, into a forward fold. Put a slight bend in your knees. Torso comes down towards your thighs. Interlace your fingers behind your back. Extend your knuckles up towards the ceiling. Open up your chest. Draw your shoulder blades together. Spread your collarbones. And if you have a bend in your knees, start to straighten your legs. Let the crown of your head descend towards the ground. And then release your hands, hands onto your hips, elbows hugging towards each other. Start to rise up, keep your gaze down, lift up one vertebra at a time. So you find yourself in Tadasana, in mountain pose, arms alongside your torso, rooting down into the earth, 
rebounding up through your legs. Lift your kneecaps up. Lengthen through all four sides of your torso. Spread your collarbones. Soften your belly. Inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale. Step your feet about four feet apart. Feet are parallel. If anything, angle your toes in and your heels out. And have a block or a book handy in front of you. Start with your hands on your hips. Inhale, reach up through your torso. Lift your heart up. Interlace your fingers behind your back. Straighten your arms, your knuckles point down towards the ground. And then as you exhale, hinge at your hips. Start to lower your chest down as you lift your knuckles up into the air. Prasarita Padottanasana C. This is a wide-legged forward fold. Inhale and exhale. And inhale and exhale. One more inhale and exhale. Release your hands onto your hips. Lift your torso up, keep your gaze on the ground. Only when you're straight up do you lift your head and turn your gaze forward. So now we're going to add on a twist to this Prasarita Padottanasana to return to working our core. So inhale, reach up through your torso, lift your heart up, lift your chest up. Exhale, start to hinge at your hips, fold forward. Release your hands either onto the floor or onto a block. Create more space if your hand doesn't reach the floor. So widen your legs apart. And if your hands, if you can't flatten your hands onto the floor, bring the floor to you by using that book or block. And then press your right palm into the block. Reach your left arm out to the side. Start to twist, rotate, your right ribs over to the left. And once you've done that, once your right ribs are over to the left, then lift your left arm up into the air. So this is a wide-legged forward fold with a twist. Inhale and exhale. You can always use that secret trick that I taught you. Lower your top hand onto your right ribs. Scoop your right ribs up towards the left. Re-extend your top arm up. Notice the difference. One more inhale. And exhale, left hand comes down. Press it into the floor or the block. Second side. Press your left palm into the ground or block, right in the center. Reach your right arm out to the right. Rotate your left ribs over to the right. That's where the twist starts. And then lift your right arm up towards the ceiling. Inhale. And exhale. If you want to lower your top hand to your left ribs, scoop your left ribs over to the right and up. Re-extend your top arm. Two more cycles of breath. And then lower your right hand onto the block or the floor. Lower the crown of your head down. Hands on your hips and start to lift your torso up. 
step your feet together and return to the top of the mat. Standing in Tadasana. Let your eyes close. And take a moment in Svadhyaya, in self-study, in self-awareness to observe the nature of your inner critic. Are you allowing that voice to bring you down? Or are you using that voice to pump you up? And it's interesting to think about how that relates to how you are in relationship with others. Inhale, lift your arms up, Utita Hastasana. Exhale, folding forward into Uttanasana. Inhale, come halfway up, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, folding forward into Uttanasana. Bend your knees, flatten your palms. Inhale, step your right leg back. Step your left leg to meet it. If you're an experienced practitioner and want to take the vinyasa, you can feel free to do so. Plank to chaturanga to upward facing dog. Otherwise, push your hips up and back. Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale. Inhale, turn your gaze between your palms, step your right foot forward, step your left foot to meet it, you're in forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, come halfway up, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, back into Uttanasana. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up, Uttita Hastasana. And exhale, arms lower down into Tadasana, mountain pose. Do that one more time. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, hinging at your hips, fold forward into Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward, bend your knees, flatten your palms. Inhale, step your left leg back. Step your right leg to meet it. You can take the vinyasa or immediately go into Adha Mukha Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog. Two more cycles of breath. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Lower your knees onto the ground and swing your legs out in front of you. Bend your knees, plant the soles of your feet onto the ground. It's time for more core work. Extend your arms out in front of you. Lift your shins up into the air. Come into Navasana, boat pose. And either you want your shins at a right angle, parallel to the ground, or if you can straighten your legs, feel free to do so. That's the quote unquote traditional version of the pose. You might be practicing rachamim, compassion. You might even just be on your toe tips. Even here, you're engaging your core. So choose the version that serves you best. And then with your next inhale, start to lengthen your legs forward, lower onto your lower back. Your shoulders are off the ground. You're in Ardha Navasana. And then exhale, come back into Navasana. Lift your chest up. Legs are either straight or bent at a right angle or you're on your toe tips. We're gonna do that two more times. Inhale, legs straighten out, lower down towards the ground. Your shoulders are off the ground. And exhale, come back up into Navasana. Inhale, Ardha Navasana. Exhale, 
Navasana. One more for good luck. Inhale and exhale. Plant your feet on the ground, lower down onto your back. Interlace your fingers behind your head. And then lift your shins back up into the air so they're parallel to the ground. And exhale. Inhale, lift your chest off the ground. And then rotate your left elbow to your right knee as you extend your left leg forward, twisting at your rib cage. And exhale, left knee in, come back to the center. Inhale, right elbow to the left knee as you extend your right leg forward. Exhale, back to the center. These are yoga bicycles. So the inhale, you twist and lengthen. Exhale, come back to center. Inhale, twist and lengthen. Exhale, center. I'm gonna do this for about 30 seconds. You can do one action per breath, or you can go in continuous action. You decide what's best for you. And what's best for you right now might be having your back on the ground, your knees bent, and focusing on your breathing. Ten more seconds. Three, two, one, and lower your feet onto the ground, lower onto your back, arms come alongside your torso, palms facing down, pause for a moment. And then draw your knees in, rotate from the front to the back, Back to the front, building up some momentum. Roll over onto your hands and knees, back into that tabletop position. And then tuck your toes, lift your hips up and back. Downward facing dog. And it's time for our peak pose. The pose we've been working up to. Inhale, reach your right leg up and back. Exhale, bend your right knee, draw it into your chest, round your back. Step your right foot forward. And I'm gonna invite you to come into a crescent pose. And the alternative, the modification, if you wanna choose that route, is to lower your right knee on the ground and untuck your right toes. So you decide which version you're doing. I'm gonna switch my legs so that it's better for the camera. Inhale, lift your torso up. So this is crescent pose. You're pressing your left heel towards the back of the room. Your right knee is bent. This is the modification. You're on the ground in that high lunge. So you decide which version you're working on. Lower your hands to your chest, press your palms together. We practice this many times. Rotate your left ribs over to the right, twist over to the right, and then hook your left elbow outside of your right thigh, press your palms together, and twist over to the right. Press your left foot back to straighten your left leg. Remember the twist is coming from your abdomen. Soften your tongue. Breathe. One more inhale and exhale. Turn your gaze down, lower your hands to frame your front foot. 
If your left knee was down, tuck your left toes and lift it up. And then step your right leg back into plank. Shift your hips up and back, downward facing dog. And second side. Inhale, reach your left leg up and back. Draw your left knee into your stomach. Round your back. And then step your left foot forward. If you're taking the modification, lower your right knee down and untuck your right toes. And then everyone, inhale, lift your torso up. Lift your arms up. Lower your hands into the center of your chest. This is Parvrita Anjane Asana, a twisted crescent lunge. And then start to rotate your right ribs over to the left. Start to lower your torso down about halfway and then lock your right elbow outside of your left thigh. Press your palms together as you deepen the twist. Press back through your right heel to straighten that right leg. Three cycles of breath. Inhale and exhale. And inhale and exhale. One more inhale. Exhale, turn your gaze down. Release your hands, frame your front foot, step your left leg back to meet your right leg. You're in plank or modified plank with your knees down. And then shift your hips up and back, downward facing dog. One more inhale. And exhale, bend your knees, lower your knees onto the ground, bring your big toes to touch. Shift your hips back onto your heels, nestle your torso between your thighs and lower your forehead down and lower your forearms down. Inhale and exhale. We return to this idea of compassion, recognizing that the world was created with judgment. I think it would be misguided to try to eliminate the inner critic altogether, nor do I think that would serve us well. We need that feedback. But where compassion kicks in is in how we respond to it. When we're in such close proximity to heat, to challenge, to suffering, what offering do we extend on the yoga mat to ourselves? Take another couple cycles of breath. Then lift your forehead up, lift your torso up, swing your legs out in front of you. Let's take a forward fold. Inhale, lift your arms up, lift up through the crown of your head. Keep your back flat as you lower your torso down towards your thighs and then lower your hands to your shins, your ankles or your feet. A few cycles of breath. And with your next exhale, release your hands from your feet, your ankles, or your shins. Lift your torso up. 
And I'm gonna offer you three different options for a version of an inversion. We've done all this work on our core, on our stomach muscles, on our obliques. One of the benefits of working on your core is uh, towards better digestion and inversions also um, lead to better digestion. So one option is to have your legs up the wall. Sit with your hips towards the wall and then scoot your legs up lower onto your back into a Viparita Karani. That's the least vigorous version of, of a pose for an inversion, it's a partial inversion. Another option, if you have your blankets, is shoulder stand. And the third option is gonna be a headstand. I'll demonstrate each. You decide which one you wanna do. If you're gonna go for a shoulder stand, stack your blankets, one on top of the other. Your blankets are your towels. This is really important. And then fold your mat in half so that it's over your stacked blankets or towels. And then bend your knees, lower down onto your back. Your shoulders should be right at the edge of where your towels or your blankets are stacked and the back of your head is on the ground. I'm gonna pause for a moment in case you need to catch up. Once your back is on your stack of towels, start to walk your feet in till you can touch your heels with your fingertips. And then press your arms into the ground and start to lift your legs up, lift up onto your shoulders, take your hands, walk them down your back, which means towards your upper back sounds counterintuitive. You walk your hands down so they're close to your upper back. And then reach up through your legs. And you'll be here for about a minute. That's shoulder stand. If you're taking headstand, You'll have your blankets out of the way. And you're gonna start on your hands and your knees. Lower onto your forearms, interlace your fingers, and imagine that you had an orange inside your palms. So you don't want your palms pressing in towards each other. You want some space there. Lower the top of your head down in between your lower forearms by your wrists. Tuck your toes, start to walk your feet in and then bend one knee, lift it into your chest, bend the other and then lift your legs up into the air and come into headstand. So whichever version of this inversion you're in, take another half a minute, breathing, cooling down. That's another benefit of an inversion like shoulder stand and headstand. And certainly Viparita Karani with your legs up the wall.
then start to come out of your pose. If you're in a shoulder stand or a headstand, come out the same way you came in, lowering your legs and bending your knees, returning your feet to the ground. If you took the headstand, immediately come into child's pose. If you were in shoulder stand, start to take your towels and blankets off to the side and re-extend your mat out to straight. If you took the headstand, take a moment in Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. And then we're all gonna meet on our backs Knees bent, feet planted onto the ground. And let's come back to our happy baby. Make our way back to that womb, to Rechem or Rachamim. Come into happy baby, shins up in the air, your arms are inside your legs, but you're grabbing onto your outer feet. Start to rock from right to left and left to right. And then release your right hand, extend your right leg forward, release your left hand, extend your left leg forward, arms alongside your torso, palms facing up, let your ankles roll open and come into Shavasana. Your final resting pose. Start to wiggle your fingers and wiggle your toes, bringing some life back into your body, waking up your senses. Draw your knees into your chest. And then lower your knees towards the right side of the room and come onto the right side of your torso into a fetal position. Got to stick with this running theme of Rechem, the womb. Press your palms into the ground and push yourself up into Sukhasana, an easeful sitting position. If you have compression in your lower back, you can sit up on a block. I'm going to make that choice. Hands on top of your knees, palms facing up. 
And as we wind down this practice and our exploration of Rachamim, I want to explore one other dimension of this Hebrew word for compassion. What I think is interesting is that Rachamim is a plural version of this word. This is a, an attribute that only exists in plural form. And our rabbis and our teachers explain that that is because compassion is about being in relationship. It's that connection in the womb between a mother and her child, the connection between a father or a parent and their kid, between other family members, between friends, where you are in such close proximity to each other that you sense the other person's suffering and you make decisions, hopefully, to alleviate the, that suffering. Sometimes that just simply means showing up and listening without taking any further action. That action in and of itself is sufficient. And other times there are resources that we can provide, there's hugs that we can provide, insights. I wanna close with this wisdom from the tradition of yoga. Compassion is not a relationship between the heart and the wounded. It's a relationship between equals. Only when we know our own darkness well can we be present with the darkness of others. Compassion becomes real when we recognize our shared humanity. Press your palms together in the center of your chest. Thumbs press into your breastbone. Inhale to lengthen up through all four sides of your torso. And exhale. May we all be blessed with rachamim, with compassion on this journey towards human decency. Drop your chin to your chest. And Shabbat Shalom, Namaste. Thank you so much, as always, for your practice, for taking this time to turn inward, as I like to think of it, for the purpose of turning outward and being outward facing.